Hi folks, Mr. Tesalonian back here again. I want to take you through a project I've been working on. I showed you the mini gasifying wood stove prototype. Uh, this is a little bit larger version to see how it worked. I'm going to kind of take you through what's going on here. Real simple design here. You've got some open latches so you can open up the door. The door's got the bent handle so it naturally stops on the downfall. Won't flop against the stove where it's nice and hot. Uh, we got a little wind today so I'm going to try to do this in between the wind. Inside, this is where you feed your material. Inside the firebox, I've got a gasification style system built in there, which I'm going to take the camera, take the top off, and show you what it looks like inside. And tonight, I'm going to light it up and show you what it looks like burning. Open the door, show you to feed it, everything about it. I have another attachment that I'll show you uh, here in about a week that goes off the bottom of this. I'm going to have to extend the legs. I had to set it up on cinder blocks to hook it up. Uh, one of the key things about a gasifying wood stove is that not only can I run it in a typical gasification wood stove manner to heat my home, but if I reverse that action with a fan and a draw system underneath the stove, with the ability to shut off the flow out the chimney pipe and then draw it down underneath the stove, reverse the action of the system, I can produce syn gas that can go outside and into a generator, which I've got just about done. I've had the gas already flaring out of the pipe. Right now I'm trying to find a generator that will run on this. So anyways, let me go through here and take you through the rest of it. I've got a little latch up here at the top. Drops open so you can get in there work the material around. Over here on the side, which I'll show you here a little better in the moment, is just like the system on the smaller wood stove that I showed you, the prototype, where you actually pull the little latch out and it'll actually open and shut the bottom of the main gasifier inside of there. To shut it, you just rotate it, it locks into place. There's actually a dump plate on the bottom of the main gasification chamber so that all the ash and all the coal that's not burned can dump out of the system and do a catch tray down below. And that's what this door right here, this little lever, you pull it, it opens up, you can see some ash probably falling out of there. That got a little caught here. There we go. Had some material in it. Uh, so this is going to open and shut your ash trap. As you can see, I've already burnt it and there's ash dropping out. Uh, the stovepipe here is another unique key piece to this. I found that throughout the gasification burn in this system, either I need a much larger chamber for the burn to take place with fresh air inlets right there in the chamber, or what I did here is create a secondary burn system. This is two layers of stovepipe, one smaller inner diameter stovepipe and one larger one. Give us a second for the wind here. All right, up here on the top, what I have is a pretty big key piece to this system. It's a double inner and outer sleeve, a stovepipe. Uh, the outer sleeve stops below the bottom here, as you can see. It allows air to travel up in between, rise up through the pipe. Now there's a set of burner holes all the way around, about this high, and another set all the way at the top. That makes sure to mix fresh oxygen, get, creates a swirl in there, and helps burn any leftover syn gas in the production system so there's no smoke coming out of this in the end. So let me grab the camera here. I'm going to walk you through a little closer, show you the dump system. I'm going to take the top off, let you see down inside of it, and show you how the double burner stovepipe works. All right, here we are looking down inside the burn chamber. I'll back up a little. Took the top off of it. Wanted to show you how this works. So as you can see here, there's a ring of holes all the way around the top here. Those are half inch holes all the way around. Here's your burn chamber. If you look way down there at the bottom, let me zoom them in just a little bit, you notice there's burn holes all the way around at the bottom down there. Okay, so there's your gasification burn chamber. You'll notice the dump plate at the very bottom there and the square cutout. I'll open up the valve for you here and you can see how it opens and shuts. It allows the material to dump out. So what's happening here inside the wood stove is the inner chamber holds all your material. It gets hot, creates an air draw between this wall and the inner chamber wall. That air draw comes out these holes and mixes fresh oxygen into the top of the system with the smoke and burns it. The bottom holes allow air to draw in from the bottom to complete that burn as the material burns down to the bottom. It also works slightly as a uh, venturi system as air is drawn up these walls towards these holes 
creates a vacuum down here at the bottom holes and pulls some of the smoke out, a downward draw into the system and pulls some of it into here, helping mix some of the smoke in with the air and swirl it so it'll burn. So that's a really simple view of how this works. Uh, I'll show you here, just the side how I hold the dump valve system. It's just a bent rod going through a guide hole. The, the lock here on the side is a lot like the mini version, just has a notch cut out that allows that to lock into. You rotate it out, it naturally pops up. And you can see it's just a flat rod going in there, hooked to the bottom of that plate. So we'll lock that together. Now this is going to be difficult to show you without flipping the stove over, but that just works an actuated plate at the bottom here. Let me go ahead and flip it over for you. So here you can see, there's the cutout, there's the opening of the plate, which will be kind of hard to do at this angle. Doesn't want to do it. But, uh, so there's your plate that opens and shuts. Here's your air inlet hole, the single air inlet hole, which I'm going to put a valve over, but I'm using this right now to pull the smoke out of the bottom, to reverse this process, to put syngas out of this stove outside into a generator. So let me go ahead and flip this back up on its legs again. Very lightweight system, easy to build. I'm going to go ahead and take you here through the stove pipe. And as you can see down in here, there's a ring of holes right there all the way around. And all this is is a top collar that I made, obviously out of some cookie can or something. Just made a bunch of little cuts, folded them over, creating a, a top collar between the outer and the inner ring in here. Uh, it'd be more difficult to show you the inner holes here. Well, you can see them right there in the light. There's your inner set of holes, and in the bottom of the shot there, uh, we got some wind kicking up, so give me a second for the shot here. But in the bottom there, in the light, you can see that inner ring of holes up at the very top. All right, so that helps mix air between the walls here. Air gets drawn up between the walls since the inner pipe is longer than the outer pipe. Mixes fresh air and completes a secondary burn to make sure there's no smoke coming out of this pipe. And tonight what I'm going to do is fire this up and let you see it in action. Just show you real quick here the door. Nice and easy to build. Uh, we got the winds kicking, so I'm going to go ahead and end the shot here until uh, this evening. I hope you enjoyed. This is Mr. Thessalonian and the Thessalonian Man Show. Hi folks, Mr. Thessalonian back here again. I'm going to go ahead and fire up the gasifying wood stove for you. First thing we're going to do here is load it with some fine uh, materials that I picked up, some small sticks. You can use this with big wood or small wood. It's just easy for me to pick this up underneath the trees here. So I'm going to show you what I got. This is basically the firewood we're going to use. We're going to just feed that in the hole here. Make sure you don't have any long sticks sticking in there, kind of jamming it all up in a weird angle. Okay, so we got a little bit of firewood put in there. Next thing we're going to do is take some of this cedar bark, just because I want a quick light up here. Just kind of feather it out a bit. There we go. Throw that in there. We grab the lighter. All right, now that we've loaded the stove up with wood, I'm going to go ahead and light it up and we'll show you how fast this thing starts up. And that's probably all we're going to need. That cedar bark burns pretty well. Now that we've got it lit, I'm going to let the camera sit there for a minute. Uh, let you see how it starts up. And in a moment here, I'll bring the camera closer and let you see how the burn holes are working. I'll shut the door up and let you see it. Uh, you can see inside of there already we've got a pretty good flame building. Let me stir that up now that we've got it lit. And there we go. So that's the wood stove in action. It's kind of different than typical wood stove or any other fire you've ever lit. Typically you light a fire from the bottom on gasification, at least on this type of gasification, you light it from the top. So as you can see, we've got a good flame going already inside of there. Stove's working well. I've got the dampener on the bottom shut down. 
I've got the bottom latch all shut up onto the bottom of the burn chamber. And there we go. We've got a good gasifier wood stove already in action here. As this heats up, more of those holes will start igniting more of that fuel in there. Uh, I've got to start creating the air draw up the system. It's got to heat up the stove a bit. So we'll give that a moment. Let me go ahead and zoom in the camera for you here and let you see what it looks like a little closer in. All right, so there you go. This is a zoomed in shot here looking inside the stove. Uh, as you can see, there is an incredible flame going on in there. I was trying to pick a time where I wasn't going to have any wind here creating a draft in through the door, but we're getting it anyways. As you can see, there is a lot of fuel coming out of that stove right now. It's enough to wick out past the door. Uh, what I'm going to do there is go ahead and shut the door down just for a second and show you what it looks like with the door shut. Uh, so give me a moment to set that shot up. Alright, so as you can see with the door open, there is an awful lot of flame going on inside of there and the flame will actually come out through the door. The smoke that you see right now is only because I have a loose lid on this thing. I didn't put any of the screws in for the shot. Uh, I just wanted to show you what it looked like. I'm not going to get much closer than this, obviously, because of that large flame rolling out of there. And another one rolling out of the chimney pipe. Uh, that afterburner chimney pipe does a good job making sure that uh, it's almost all like a jet coming out of there right now. Heck of a flame, <laughs> really tall. That's why I said you, you definitely need a secondary burn chamber with a gasifying wood stove because there's still a lot of fuel coming out of here at the top. And that's also why the syngas production works. You notice here we have an incredible flame also. That's raging out of there uh, quite a few feet. So what I'm going to do here is shut the door down for you. After I zoom in and show you what the holes look like inside. I don't know how well this is going to come out. But you can see the lines of fire here. Roaring through there. And I'm going to back up just a little bit because that wind is actually gusting that out a bit. An immense amount of heat coming out of this right now uh, for the amount of fuel I just put in there. And not only do you get the heat from the syngas production and burn, but afterwards you get a long period of heat that's going to come from the biochar burn. So let me go ahead and uh, shut this door down for you and show you what it does after that. As you can see, I've got uh, more, more energy coming out than I really need. So let me go ahead and do that. Oh, got a little tab stuck out to the side here. Alright, so there's the door shut down. And now, if you notice out of the top, it looks like we've got a propane uh, or a uh, natural gas burner going here. Uh, so we've got both a heavy syngas fire going on inside the stove, as you can see through the hole in here. And we've also got a four foot flame coming out of the top of our chimney pipe. And the only reason that's being affected right now is because of the wind. But obviously a large amount of syngas production here. Uh, that's why I realized I could still run a generator off this wood stove even while it was heating my house. Uh, as you can see, this is a huge flame raging out of there once you shut the door down. Uh, so I've got to figure out another burn box above this wood stove to help disperse this heat into the house also. Uh, that is definitely not what you want to be wasting. But it makes you wonder just what's coming out of your stovepipe and how much real fuel is there. An incredible burner. I mean, it almost looks like a turbine engine or a jet engine burning out of the top here. That's about an eight foot flame right now coming out of here. So I thought I'd show you that. That's one of the limitations so far I found that uh, definitely not capturing all the heat in a syngas wood stove. There's still a lot of energy coming out the pipe uh, that we can burn and use still. So the next stove will be adapted to use this energy, which will be heating hot water. Also, you can turn it backwards and run your generator in the end. But as you can see, that is a very, very tall flame. Uh, it's got a lot of energy to it. I'm trying to stay down here below it just in case. So let me go ahead and open up this door again show you what's going on inside the stove. So as you can see, we still have immense fire going on inside. 
That will slow down the jet out of the top slightly when I open that door. You'll see it start to smoke a little bit more. But if you look for that little bit of wood I've put in this stove and the amount of fire that's taken place, it's uh, obviously a better way to make a wood stove than the uh, typical design that we're all used to. Uh, I can basically heat a large building on a very minor amount of wood, especially if I can capture even that fire there. So I'm going to go ahead and back up the camera here and give you a chance to watch it burn for a little while. Yeah, so in the end here, what we have is still more work to do to this system. There's obviously a lot more energy to be captured. Uh, more energy than I can capture out of that small burn chamber there. Uh, one of the big keys to recapturing the extra energy within this is this wood stove pipe design. Or uh, in the other video I showed you, it's two pipes, an inner and an outer, with a set of burn holes right about here, and another one up at the top. So it's bringing fresh air up between the two pipes, feeding the lower holes and feeding the top ones, which has given us a pretty incredible flame out of there. It's starting to die down now. Uh, with the door open, it's going to eat that fuel a lot faster than it would if I had the dampener shut. So what I have here is, I hope, the future of wood stove design. Incorporated into this with the Syngas production, which will be tomorrow's video. Uh, out of the bottom of this system, I'll put the radiator, the fan, and off with the pipe. And I'll show you the Syngas production tomorrow out of that with the flare off and the lighter. Uh, and I'll show you that this not only can heat your house, uh, very effectively heat your hot water, but it also power your generator. And off a very small amount of wood, I'm pretty sure that was enough BTUs worth of energy if I had captured all of this in a building and dispersed it as effectively as possible. I could have heated a large building on just a few handfuls of scrap tinder from underneath the tree. Well, until next time, I hope you enjoyed. This is Mr. Tesslonian and the Tesslonian Man Show.